This week's homily, I wanted us to talk a little bit about the epistle reading that was read on this side by St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. In this letter, he's writing and he talks to the church in Corinth. And he says to them, and this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and it was just read here. Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not wage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. And I really want to focus on that line that St. Paul says, we take every thought captive to obey Christ. As we talked about, St. Paul is acknowledging the real warfare that all of us have is an unseen warfare. It's not a physical warfare. It's not a war between ideologies. It's not a warfare between countries. It's not a warfare even between families and all. For each and every one of us, the warfare is light and darkness. The warfare is Christ and the saints calling us to the kingdom and Satan and his armies pulling us away. That's for every one of us are dealing and battling in that warfare till our last breath. This is the warfare that Satan doesn't want us to pay attention to. And so many times we've put all our efforts and energy on other warfares, on other issues and other things going on, and we forget the internal warfare going in front of, in, inside of all of us. And the church is always paying attention to this warfare because if we handle the inside, the internal struggle, this battle between light and darkness, this battle between Christ and Satan that is going on for our soul, the outside becomes better for it. All the other things have their proper place once we focus on that. So our prayer and our fasting and the weapons, of the, those are our weapons that are given to help us. But one thing St. Paul is telling us is take every thought captive to obey Christ. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the armor of God and this idea of warfare, fighting against the evil forces. And we have to think, how, does, how do the evil forces work in our life? How do they? They don't force themselves into our life. They can't make us do anything. They don't come in, they can't. So how do, what is their main weapon that Satan and his armies, what do the demons use to get us? To move us in their way away from the kingdom, what do they do? And the, the main thing that, that Satan and their armies do is send thoughts. They attack with thoughts that come to our way. Thoughts of envy, thoughts of anger, thoughts of lust, thoughts of greed, thoughts of pride. These thoughts that happen. And that's why St. Paul is saying, you should take, we should take every thought that is coming and make it obedient to Christ. Make it obedient to Christ. The church fathers talk about these evil thoughts that come. And many times I even hear uh, people who say, Achanai, sometimes I just get these thoughts. I get thoughts of anger. I get thoughts of even just being down, being depressed. These thoughts that I don't know why they're coming, but they're coming. And we have to remind ourselves that those thoughts aren't us. Those thoughts are coming from, out, out, from the outside, from the evil forces who are trying to bring us away from God. And the evil thoughts, there's a, there's a monk on Mount Athos who talks about this in a, in a very systematic way systematic way and he says these evil thoughts or he uses a Greek word logos moi or evil thoughts have five stages and I wanted to go through those five stages so that we can at least be a little bit aware of it in the spiritual warfare that we have the first stage is the assault the attack the first attack to our minds is thought that comes out of nowhere I'm giving an example but we can apply this to many different things but an example is, look at this pile of money. Nobody is looking. Look at this pile of money sitting there. Maybe I should take it. You know, and, and, and this is a, a simple thought that came into our mind. We saw a pile of money and this a thought came and we're like, where did this thought come? The second thing is an interaction. There's an interaction that happens. A dialogue, if you will. There's a thought that comes and then there's a dialogue. We're, we're interacting with this thought. Should I take the money? Should I not take the money? 
What happens if I take the money? Who will see it? What will happen? What if I don't and then leave it there? What do I do? There's this dialogue that happens. We're kind of a battling of our conscience, you know. The third step after assault and after interaction, the third step is consent. We are now agreeing with it. We had a dialogue and now we said, I'm going to do it. I'll take the money. It won't hurt anybody. I'll take it. No one's missing it. Obviously, it was left here. I'm going to take it. There's a decision made. I'm agreeing to this now. The fourth thing, as we continue this kind of behavior, is captivity. The next time around we see this, we think, oh, I've always taken this. I've taken it before. Nothing happened. Let me take it again. Let me take it again. Nothing big happened. We start to lose control. We start, it starts to become easier for us, right? Something that at first had a big dialogue, now it's getting a little easier. We're becoming captive to the thought that Satan has put in our mind. And then the fifth one is what the church fathers call a passion or a slavery or an obsession, an addiction, if you will. We have now given the key to Satan and now he's having his way with us. Now we're completely controlled by this, thought, this addiction. We're completely controlled by it. I gave that example of money, but we can use so many different examples. We can think, a thought comes to my mind, this person is me. That's a thought. This person is me. And then we interact with them. Why is this person so me? How dare they do that? Huh, I wonder, you know what's going on? Then we make a decision. I'm going to decide to be mean back. I'm going to be, decide to not like this person. I'm going to decide to talk bad of this person. I'm going to make that decision. And then the fourth time around, we're to captivity. Now every time I see that person, I'm, it's, my whole demeanor has changed. I now have to avoid this person. I now have to be a slave to this relationship that I've decided I don't want to know this person. And then fifth, the obsession, we have a grudge. We're controlled by the grudge. It's a simple example, but sin and the, the way Satan works is like this. You can take lust, you can take greed, you can take pride, you can take any laziness. All of these different things. There's a process that happens where Satan is planting the seed of this thought, but we have to decide to interact, we have to decide to consent, we have to decide to then become captive, and then we lose control and become, it becomes one of our passions in a bad way. As opposed to a virtue, this is a passion, something that we struggle with. You know, St. Paisius tells us, when we think about our thoughts, St. Paisius is a monk who, saw, who tells us, think of your thoughts, the thoughts that you have, whatever they are, are like airplanes. They're around, they're flying around. That's not your fault that they're there, the airplanes are there. But don't build a runway in your heart for the thought to land and stay there. Whatever those thoughts are, sometimes we have those thoughts. Don't build the runway in your heart. And so how do we handle this now that we know a little bit of how these things work in our spiritual life? How everything that we, these sins that we deal with in our life are starting with the thought. How do we handle this? You know, there's a Saint Anthony, the father of monasticism. He was really attacked by many th sinful thoughts. And he said to God, Lord, I want to be saved, but these thoughts don't leave me alone. What should I do? How should I be saved? And after a while, he looked and he saw a man and he saw a man working and he was, he was uh, working on a, 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 uh, something on a, some thread. He was working on it, on a rope or something, putting it together and he would get up to pray and then he would come back to the rope and then after a little bit, get up to pray and then he would come back to the rope. And then an angel told St. Anthony, do this, you will be saved. And he was filled with courage. What was he seeing from this man who was getting up to pray, going back to work, getting up to pray, going back to work? Frequent prayer. Frequent prayer. It wasn't just that he prayed in the morning and he prayed at the night, but he prayed throughout. Little bit of prayer. I'm not saying long prayer, I'm not saying three hour prayer, but little bits of prayer that was frequent through the day that he was doing. It was very important, you know, St. Evagoras says, the prayer is the laying of thoughts, laying aside of thoughts. That's what prayer is. All the stuff that's bothering us, all the stuff that's attacking us, when we come to prayer, all that goes to the side. We just focus and we're with God. 
You notice, you know, we may have all had over this weekend all sorts of things bothering us. But when we can come and worship, it's a, there's a laying aside of all of that. And we come and we're with our Lord. We're sitting, we're still with God. So even in our day, we have to do that. Don't just count on your morning or your evening, but even at your workplace. Take a moment, take five minutes. Pray to the Lord. Use the Jesus prayer. Take a moment to pause. Understand the, the, the warfare that is going on that can help us even through this. You know, St. Barsanufius tells us about our thoughts. He says, to, question that, that should, the, to the question that should we argue with the thoughts, I will answer, don't argue. Because the enemies precisely want this to happen, and seeing our altercation will not cease their attack. It is better if you pray to the Lord. Open your feebleness before Him, and He will not only drive out these thoughts, but eradicate them completely. So when people use the Jesus prayer and things like that, it's just dismissing the thought. We're not engaging the thought. We're not discussing the thought. We're just dismissing the thought with the, with the Jesus prayer. And sometimes when we're in those later stages of captivity and passions, when we're completely controlled by the thought of anger or hatred or lust or addiction, whatever it may be, Abba Dorotheos, one of the Desert Fathers, says, Know that if a person is oppressed by some thought and he does not confess it to his spiritual father, he will give the thought more power to oppose and torment him. But if the person confesses the oppressive thought, if he opposes and struggles with it, instilling into himself the desire for the opposite to the thought, then the passion will weaken and will eventually cease to plague him. So Abba, the Abba is telling us, there are some things that are even beyond uh, something that we can just reflect, deflect. We're really a slave to these things. Bring it in our confession. Be specific about it and say it. Whatever those, those things are that have been constantly plaguing us. And those passions will weaken, is what the church is telling us. So this week, what I want us to think in our spiritual life is, pay attention to thoughts. See if we can recognize evil thoughts and and these stages of assault and interaction, consent, captivity, and passions. Number two, practice frequent prayer to help combat these thoughts. Understand that when I'm choosing to make time for prayer frequently, little by little, I'm, I'm giving peace to my mind and giving less weight to the thoughts that are lingering there. And number three, if we are in the later st stages of captivity and passions, let's plan to make confession on these thoughts in holy confession, so that these passions weaken their hold in our life. So as St. Paul says, let us take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. May all glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always.